Hello once more. Today I want to make a history lesson, but first let's talk about recent events. <coughs> Around 5 UTC, a satellite recorded a clear impact of wave which affected all the values which describe solar wind. In my previous movie I described the impact of a coronal hole stream, or rather two of them. This time ACE readings show a different kind of space weather activity. Instead of a frontal wave, which is the best sign of incoming stream of fast solar wind, here the density dropped just before the impact. While coronal hole streams are causing the velocity to grow, they are also decreasing the amount of particles. Here the density grows together with speed and temperature. Such behavior of solar wind is the best sign that we are dealing with a coronal mass ejection. But don't worry, even if the impact affected the magnetic field, BZ component remained positive most of the time and the magnitude didn't reach more than 5 nanoteslas. The response of geomagnetic field was minor. Disturbances on Norwegian magnetometers didn't even reach 200 nanoteslas. Just to compare, the daily geomagnetic jolt is visibly stronger. However, it is weaker than the one which I was showing you in previous movie. The impact of CME was actually pretty healthy for the condition of our magnetic field, as it caused a small injection of low energy protons into the plasma sphere. Besides, it seems that it reduced greatly the strength of our daily geomagnetic disturbances. Now, let's compare the disturbances caused by solar activity and those which have other source. For those who watch my movies for some time, it won't be anything new, as I told about it many times before. Graphs placed at the top of this chart come from stations located closer to Northern Pole than the ones on bottom. According to the official knowledge about space weather, geomagnetic disturbances should be much stronger close to our magnetic poles. First event caused by the CME is a great example. Second event, connected with the daily disturbances, is different. Stations placed at closest distance to the pole didn't record anything. This is the best way to say if the disturbance was caused by the sun or by low energy field. It works for all multiple magnetometer plots, so each time when you'll notice readings similar to those ones, visible only over middle latitudes, you can easily assume that you won't find any solar activity connected with it. Of course, I wouldn't be myself if I wouldn't check the SWMF magnetosphere monitors. And it seems that I've managed to find something interesting. Even if the impact itself looks just like typical, boring, space weather activity, about which you can learn on most data sources on internet, some very interesting activity can be seen soon before the velocity started to grow. Around midnight, ACE recorded something what looks like a frontal wave of decreased solar wind density. Look at the response of magnetosphere for this uncommon IMF behavior. Here we can see a clear increase of backside pressure. And this is a flux tube which connected the planet to a strange spot of bigger density at the far end of magnetotail. Hmm, it seems that at this point Earth lost most of its open polar cap field lines.
here we can see that magnetosphere lost quite a lot of charged particles. This is probably why geomagnetic field is losing strength. Now comes the CME. And the impact makes the magnetosphere to appear much more healthy. Some time ago I explained different space weather factors which can be responsible for increased seismic activity. One of them is the outflow of plasma which is visible on this image. But it is just a part of a much bigger image. Plasma which is being discharged from the inner layers of magnetosphere moves through this flux tube which is connected to the ionosphere around the equatorial region. What can be tracked on the HMF2 monitor? However quakes which are taking place in some distance from the equator are connected with a different process which I explained partially while I was speaking about earth spots and open polar cup field lines. As an example I use the Iceland quakes which take place every day. However for some unknown reason SWMF magnetosphere monitors are offline since yesterday, 10th of September. During this day the strongest Iceland quake took place at 528 UTC. Now look at the behavior of polar cup field lines, black ones. There was a clear magnetic reconnection which turned a couple of the open black field lines into closed ones, red. Another example from the day before, 5.2 quake which took place at 7 past 1 UTC. On the SWMF monitor we can see that at this time one of the blue interplanetary field lines turned black as it was connected to the polar cap. During such process our planet is connected directly to the IMF what is causing the inflow or outflow of particles depending on the magnetic orientation. It seems that the video which shows the volcano tornado became public right in time to be a visual confirmation of the magnetic field lines connecting to our planet. This one caused a visible outflow of sulfur dioxide. Welcome in the electromagnetic universe. But now it's time for a small dose of history, which I've promised you in the beginning. Long time ago, on 20th of August, in a galaxy far far away, wait, I was just joking right in the solar system we witnessed a very interesting event. A giant solar flux tube passed through our planet. Those new annual monitors appeared to work only when they want to, but this time NASA made me a surprise, as the images were generated exactly for this event and to allow me to confirm my guess. The flux tube is visible nicely on the middle screen. I wouldn't be myself if I wouldn't get as much data about this uncommon activity as I can. That's why I requested a SWMF plus CRCM model run. Those images are the result of this run. First a 3D view of field lines.
As you can see, entire magnetosphere was disturbed greatly by the passing flux tube. But let's check other views. This is the X cut. It shows the front of magnetosphere. Notice the irrational behavior of solar wind vectors around the magnetosphere. The current rings are visibly shifted to the side. And here we can see the borders of the giant flux tube. They should be circular, but SWMF model is probably not capable to generate round IMF field lines. Some really odd decrease of density can be seen in the upper right corner. Now the current rings seem to be placed on the opposite side of Earth. The bow shock of magnetosphere shows a clear compression from the sides. If you think that those images were disturbing, look at the Y-cut view. Hmm, can anyone tell me where is the magneto tail? No? A nice flux tube forms in the remains of night part of magnetosphere. I would love to hear some rational explanation of this magnetic tentacle of increased density, which is entering the magnetosphere from the night side. This wave of decreased density is interesting as well.
For the end, the Z-cut view. Notice the clear side influence, which makes the magneto tail to wobble in east-west orientation. Those curly field lines are interesting as well. I can be wrong, but it seems that on 8th of September, Soho captured another enormous solar flux tube. Sad that those images are currently gone from the official site. Of course, by coincidence, the connection is directed towards the area where, according to my model, the source of low energy field is placed right now. On Bartol's cosmic ray page, we can see another burst of enormous cosmic rays the negative polarity seems to dominate in this case. To finish this lesson with a nice accent, a view of directly Earth-facing X1.6 flare. The CME is on its way to our planet, and the geomagnetic storm is a rather sure thing in next couple days. A proton event started soon after the flare. Class dismissed. Be safe. Peace.